Crimson red, my hands and heart bled from paper cuts of exploding shrapnel forced upon a future's head. Children. Congressman Grison Moja Ab Nilasman Achani Hilakta Moja Badru Walasman Achalaktahe Kionke Badru Mir Drone or Nehisakte or Drone Ki Hermo Jodgi Mehamara Hon Hau Fokoj Der Kelia Hatam Hojatahe. He made me kill children. For country, for profit, for yourself. How can you smile? Killing has become just like a video game. A joystick steers a drone towards a target, and with a simple press of a button, a bomb drops and detonates. The explosive is real, just like the people it falls on. You can bomb villages in Afghanistan or Pakistan from the safety of a bunker in the US. So, how are you feeling about the trip? I'm a bit well, nervous, to be honest with you, yeah? because... Was it three, three filming days? Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's so, really it's tight. really important that the relatives of the drone victims manage to get to Islamabad in time, because yeah. otherwise we'll get nothing. Well, yeah. Since we can't go to the tribal areas anyway, for because of security reasons. Here we are, plenty okay, cool. of time for your flight. Thank Marina, you. have a safe one, take care. Thank you. And Thanks, I'll get in touch with you from America. Yeah, and please send me your number. Will That's do. the important we'll thing. Do. And yeah. then I'll I'll call our producer. Okay. And then we'll figure it out. Cheers, Marina. Good Thank luck. You. All the best. Thank you. I'll call you yeah. as soon as we like. Take bye. care. Bye-bye. According to the Bureau of Investigative Journalism, there have been more than 400 drone strikes since 2004, killing around 1,000 innocent civilians. And that's just in Pakistan. Our local contact has taken me to meet a man who narrowly avoided one of those strikes. <laughs> Waziristan is the mountainous region between Pakistan and Afghanistan a self-proclaimed but unrecognized state. Populated with disaffected Pashtun tribes, it's been viewed as a Taliban stronghold since 2001. The Pakistani government has so far been unable to regain control of the area. Malik claims to have been personally targeted by at least four drone strikes since 2010. <laughs> Sean Westmoreland is a former drone communications technician. Since leaving the Air Force, he struggled to come to terms with the role he played in the US drone program. Yeah, I was, I was sleeping in the back of this truck probably for about a quarter of last year. Uh, well, I was broke and having psychological issues. Um, so, yeah, I had a bed back there, a little space heater, and I was sleeping on top of the mountain. Wasn't getting the help I needed, and you know, I was, I was kind of having a lot of issues back in October. And um, you know, I had slept at the, the bridge uh, a couple of nights, and I was uh, 
seriously planning on, on jumping. Um, and uh, I decided that I shouldn't do that. I should, I should get help and I should, um, you know, probably have somebody else uh, taking care of me for a certain amount of time. There's a member of the community that was nice enough to uh, allow me to basically sublet this place and be the, the uh, groundskeeper here um, for about a year. Um, I, I haven't really had a stable place to stay up until now, but I had gardening knowledge, so. You know, when you're in the military, your your chief purpose is, is mostly to destroy things. Um, and, you know, I, I've been dealing with that for a while. Um, so uh, having, having, you know, the ability to work on plants and, and stuff like that is, is kind of healing for me. Because um, I'm going, you know, from using my creative energy to destroy things to, to creating life. Um, well, th well, thank you very much for directions. I look forward to meeting you. Uh, Dennis, and hopefully soon. Well, it'll be I think it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be a good time. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. I arranged to meet Dennis Zacklin at the New Mexico State University Flight Center. The center works on integrating unmanned aircraft into regular international airspace, and these people know everything there is to know about drones. I did 29 years in the United States Navy. Any type of intel is good intel. When you're not chancing a pilot's life, that's even better. Plus, when you think about it, and the future is unmanned. An F-16 can take a probably a 15 or a 20 degree turn. The problem is, is the pilot passes out at nine or 10 G. So if you take the pilot out, does that make it a better fighter aircraft? Well, sure it does because now it turns tighter, it goes faster, it just does a lot of things yeah. better. These are excellent tools, and that's what we always say. Yeah. This yeah. isn't a solution, it's a tool. I flew the uh, Tiger Shark in Afghanistan, or in Iraq, and then the, this aircraft in Afghanistan. So in Iraq, you at least get to go, uh, without leaving the base, you can see, you know, countryside out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> without get, having to worry about getting shot down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, some of the biggest things is they keep people safe. Yeah. Um, there were some operations where, when I was flying, uh, you know, if the troops were in contact, mm -hmm. you know, they told us to go down and fly as low as we could to try to draw fire. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. And they were able to get people out. Yeah. Uh, because they were concentrating firing at us. Mm -hmm. The Movement for Justice is a political party in Pakistan. The Taliban branded its leader, opposition politician Imran Khan, an infidel and even wanted him dead. We met at his home in Islamabad, now under constant armed guard. He is one of Pakistan's most popular politicians, organizing rallies that attract thousands of followers. He doesn't believe the conflict can be solved militarily, neither in Afghanistan nor Pakistan. I feel that this is totally a total violation of human rights. It, killing people by these uh, drones, basically sitting on a screen and eliminating people, uh, dehumanizing them, treating them uh, uh, as if you know, they are from some other planet, not giving them a basic right uh, of proving their innocence. I mean, it, it violates all norms of justice. They claim they have intelligence that shows that they are terrorists. They are bombing villages. There are villages there. There are houses. There are mud houses. They're bombing them. And then they think that the, a bomb, when, it's, when it bursts, when it splinters, that the shrapnel knows exactly who's a terrorist and who's a woman and who's a child, who's a grandmother. I mean, there are so many instances of people being killed who had nothing to do with uh, terrorism. Uh, and, and then those who call terrorists, Sometimes they claim that they've killed a terrorist and then you see he's alive. So who have they killed? I received a performance report was, which was intended for like promotional purposes. Um, it was, it said that I assisted in 2,400 close air support missions and 200 plus enemy kills. We had, we had asked, there were several of us that asked, you know, how many civilians died and they wouldn't tell us, but 
if if you understand the areas that we're covering um, and you were to look at the UNAMA report on the amount of uh, civilian casualties uh, that happened that year, um, it would be somewhere around 359. We can understand in a way that, okay, Americans maybe don't see that their actions are in fact fueling more terrorism, but why does the Pakistani government not put more pressure in order to stop this program in, on its own land? All they see is dollars, and if you pay them enough dollars, they are willing to uh, allow Americans to bomb their own country, which is an ally of the U.S. Pakistan is a U.S. ally in this war on terror. So it's never happened in history where, where a country is bombed by its own ally. <laughs> Noor Behram is a journalist from North Waziristan. Whenever there is a new drone strike, local people call him so he can document the number of innocent civilians killed. तो हम फौरी तौर पर उस ड्रोन हमले में पहुंच जाते थे मैं कोशिश इसलिए ज्यादा करता था कि मैं वहां पर पहुंच पहुंचता था कि इसमें मैं यह नहीं देखता था कि इसमें अलकायदा कितने मरे हैं These days no matter where you are in the world the chances are you're being watched and with a seemingly unstoppable proliferation of drones privacy may be a thing of the past Military drones have resulted in the deaths of thousands of innocent people and can strike anytime, anywhere. Flying at over 10,000 meters in the air, you probably won't have the slightest idea you're being watched. And if they attack, you won't see it coming. What do you think, drumming back or front? Front. Well, maybe in back. We're going to walk close to the shoulder, but on the pavement. It's your choice right now that it's dark, whether you put the mask in front over your face. If you don't feel comfortable, then wear it in the back. That way, when we do, we're going to process. We have to turn around and come back this way. Forty, fifty minutes outside of Las Vegas. You can see the base just behind me. There's a sign there with all the statistics, of the number of victims killed in all the different countries where drones have been used, and a sign that says, uh, "Mothers say no war." So it's, it's not just the fact that these drones are killing up to nine out of ten innocent people. It's the fact that they're killing people anyway. The, the, exactly. Yeah. The United States does not have the right to decide who to assassinate in the world. No. Sometimes I I get frustrated because the most tragic part are the children that get killed. Yeah. But sometimes the civilian issue is emphasized too much. Mm -hmm. And it's just the idea of assassination that's criminal. Yeah. This is Code Pink an organization founded and run by a group of women campaigning to end U.S. wars and militarism. Today, they're protesting against Creech Air Base. But of all the people I met, I was keen to talk more to Anne Wright, a former army colonel and U.S. diplomat. Creech Drone Base is the only place, really, in the world where you can see drones taking off and landing. They're the practice vehicles for drone pilots that are just learning to control them, yeah. and then we'll start controlling them in Afghanistan or Pakistan, Somalia, Yemen. Mm -hmm. Who knows, really, where they will. Uh, it's also the base not only for uh, U.S. military pilots and contractors and CIA, mm -hmm. but also the British for years have had drone pilots. And if you look way back in there at those facilities, yeah. the, back in there somewhere are the actual control pods uh, where are the pilots uh, that are controlling them in Afghanistan and Pakistan for sure? 
We know that in this midst of thousands of cars that come in every morning and leave, uh, that there are drone pilots that may have just killed somebody in Afghanistan or Pakistan, may have killed a wedding party or whatever. Well, you don't even know who they killed. They don't know who, yeah. 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 I mean, I'm out here to protect you, the base, the anti-protesters, everybody. So I, I just would like to know who I'm dealing with and who I'm talking with. We have who am I? I don't even know who I'm talking with. Hi, Toby. Hi, Toby. How you Toby. doing? What are the mass symbolized? I haven't seen the mass before. I haven't seen it before, but you're new on the block. I, 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 so you got to educate me, Toby. Well, what do you think of when you see white masks like this? Well, I think of, uh, first and foremost, I think of those anarchist masks. Aaron, maybe they, uh, Peter, maybe they quit yeah. Peter's all the way here from Russia. What do you think when you see the, the white masks? Well, I, well I, so I interpret them as like faceless masks, as okay. kind of the faceless victims of the drones. And I know law enforcement is supposed to arrest criminals. The commander is a criminal. The, the, the truth has come out. We're assassinating innocent people. He should be arrested. Uh, that's not for me to uh, interrupt the front. Does anybody else have anything else to raise? Uh, Officer Brian, Sergeant O'Brien? We saw a lot of people dying in the street. Thank you. Thank you, Officer. Thank you. I don't know, I've got mixed emotions, really. I was expecting the protest to be a bit bigger, if I'm honest. There are about, about 15 people there, and you've got to wonder what effect such a small protest is going to have on, on other people, people entering the base and the government. Karim Khan lives in Waziristan and is another drone victim. His relatives died in one attack. तो पैर एक जहाज इधर और एक इधर कड़े हो जाते हैं बेजाम में और वहाँ से वो मिसाइल दाग देते हैं इधर से भी और इधर से भी बस पूरा घर हो जो भी दो कमरे हो तीन कमरे हो मिलकुल मिलीमीटर हो जाते हैं और बंदे भी जो जो है ना वो टुकड़े टुकड़े हो जाते हैं जल जाते हैं आग लग जाती है बड़ा धमाका होता है करीबन पैंतीस किलोमीटर में आप इसकी आवाज़ सुन सकते हैं Pakistani lawyer Shahzad Akbar defends the rights of drone attack victims. He says the problem is almost never discussed because victims simply have nowhere and nobody to turn to. Drone strikes have been taking place in mostly North Waziristan and South Waziristan, a tribal area of Pakistan, which is cut off from the rest of the country because of many reasons. But uh, to put it very simply, it's a black hole of information. <laughs> So this is what's been recovered from Waziristan? Yeah, right from most of the sites. Um, we actually have uh, pictures of people who have been killed by these mm -hmm. missiles as well. So what we did is like in 2011-12, mm -hmm. we did a... Uh, um, an exhibition. Very powerful. So, for example, in this village on such and such date, this missile was recovered from a house that killed six people, including three adults and one child, two women. I've had nightmares about standing in a village trying to get the kids to come into the, um, into some shelter and they were all just standing out looking at the drones. And, you know, before anybody could really get them to come in, they, they exploded. So we, uh, we're meeting Nick Motten now, who's also um, uh, an anti-drone activist, and he conducts lectures, goes around the country lecturing um, about drones. So we should be pulling up to his house.
So that was expensive in New York. Oh, Looks like a drone. Does, yeah, like a drone. Hello, Nick. Good morning. Hello, it's Peter. So these are the four Hellfires and the, the two bombs, I'm assuming. Yes. Is that right? Right. Yeah. These, are, these are all laser-guided bombs. Right. And missiles. OK. And, and, the, yeah. and the Hellfire missile was made for use against uh, trucks, uh, armor, you know, mm -hmm. tanks, mm -hmm. and buildings. And so when it's used against people, and then, of course, this is the camera up here. OK. That, you know, is used to target people. So the, the whole message of this to, to people in other countries is terror. Mm -hmm. This shows places in Africa where it's known that there are drone bases or drone operations of some kind. Um, okay. And uh, one of the questions was about Ramstein. I think most people in Germany are not in favor of drone war, yeah, yeah. but the United States has um, a uh, drone relay information control center in Ramstein. And it seems to be very critical. Information coming from Creech Air Force Drone Control Center in the United States to Ramstein, and then through satellite, the, the drones might be controlled to attack in Yemen or you know Afghanistan or Iraq or yeah, yeah. Somalia. Um, so it, it seems that Ramstein is very critical node in this. It should be on 399.3. To find out more about Germany's role, I've come to Cologne to meet Andreas Schuler a lawyer defending the rights of three survivors of a drone strike in Yemen. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, complain against the German government, especially they, they bring forward the use of the Rammstein Air Base. Can you explain to us the, the legality or illegality of uh, Germany allowing the US to use Rammstein as a relay base? Yes, we see that the use of drones, of armed drones by the United States, for example, in Yemen, um, is a violation of international law because um, many people are killed there, many civilians are killed in Yemen, um, and that's unlawful under international law standards. It's also unlawful under German law standards. Let me go to the castle there, where we have a beautiful view to the airbase. Stop Rammstein activist Connie Schmidt is driving us to the airbase. On our way, he told us that the movement has grown dramatically in the few months since it was founded in 2015. The group's first rally in September was one of the biggest protest marches against the American airbase for 20 years. So many things in English here yeah. compared to other areas that I've seen. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah, a little bit more American than Germans. Really? No, yes. No. It is no. not totally true, but. It is. In Kaiserslautern I live in 80,000 in the town and really? 30,000 Americans in the in a special area. Wow. We know what happens here. We, we know that they control, they killed maybe 4,000 people by drones. And they are controlled by Rammstein. I, I am born in Misenbach. It is uh, the neighbor uh, village from Rammstein. Uh, and it is my duty to say no to this. I don't know if I will be successful. My success is to do it. Every year, 40,000 airplanes are going over my house. Well, not necessarily. There's a very small drone called the Scan Eagle. Anti-drone activist Nick Motten says UAVs will soon be capable of making autonomous decisions about who to kill. Area of South, and there is um, research that goes on around, you know, as far as we can gather, uh, using uh, uh, digital imaging of people's faces 
uh, to be put into the computer so that oh, okay. the, can, the, the drone can identify individual people okay. on, its, on its own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the idea there would be if you have drone pilots who don't want to fly drones, just yeah. get rid of the drone pilots and let the drones do the job themselves. Former drone communications technician Sean Westmoreland still haunted by nightmares, believes that tomorrow's drones will not be troubled by human conscience. Machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence in, 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 uh, in machines designed to make kill decisions, that's a little uncomfortable. Friends off, heading hold, and stall protector off. You still have airspeed hold on, correct? Correct. That's a pretty scary thought, Marina. Oh, absolutely. Can you imagine what will happen later on? And we've seen this happen for mm -hmm. how many years now? You must wonder, what will it take for them to put an end to it? Well, especially now we know how much money the arms industry is making from it. Exactly. And just recently, we had, once again, another example mm -hmm. in Pakistan, the drone strike. And we had... The is that Pakistan... the one that killed the guy from Afghanistan? Exact, yes. Exactly, yeah, right? So yeah. we had the Pakistani government slamming the US for violating mm -hmm. its sovereignty, mm -hmm. but We've heard this all before, how yeah, many times? Yeah. I wonder if you'll ever change. I find it uh, so incredible that uh, uh, people in the United States accept this as a way of fighting terrorism. I mean, and there should be some proof that they're winning the war. When history is laid out and more is revealed over time, Obama will be known as the assassination president as Bush was known as the torture president.